can everybody else hear that or is it just the two of us? Because if it's just the two of us, we can push through. Oh. My phone is muted, Nina. If I mute my phone, you guys aren't going to be able to hear me on Instagram. So if I do that, you won't be able to hear me. Well, that's bad news. That's bad news. All right. So if you're on Instagram, um, hop on over to Facebook because we're going to mute. I'm going to mute myself on Instagram. Um, so just, yeah, come on over to the this side here. So I'm going to mute myself here. All right. They're not going to be able to hear me. They'll probably be able to hear you. And that's the most important one anyway. I mean, I don't know about that, but that's okay. That's all right. All right, so um, hello, Gray. How are you? I am great. I'm fantastic. Oh On a scale to from one to ten, I think and I'm like a nine and nine and a bit. That's pretty good for a Wednesday night. That's pretty good, pretty especially good. since I've just travelled from Sydney. I've been in Sydney for two days, and I'm like, which city am I in? But anyways, here we are. Uh, thank you for joining us. But first and foremost, um, I'll just do a quick intro. So yeah. Nancy is who I am. I'm, I'm from the Australian Dermal and Laser Institute. And tonight we've got amazing, uh, this amazing guest, Bree. Don't roll your eyes. Um, and I can still hear all this um, reverberation happening on, on Instagram. So, you know, if you are on there, make sure you come on Facebook. Um, but today we have um, got who's going to talk all about um, the importance of education and training and mindset and um, oh, culture and all these amazing things. So How long do we have? Do we have a couple of hours? Because we're going to... <laughs> Half an hour. So we have got to make these um, nice and short um, and that's because obviously, you know, after half an hour it gets a little bit much. Um Hey, I'm going to turn Instagram off. I'm sorry, guys. If you're on Instagram, please join us on Facebook. So I'm really sorry right. to do this to you. All right. Over. Come on over. All right. Okay. Ciao. Ciao. All right. Okay. I'm so everyone should be able to hear us now. So thank you for coming over, um, um, on to Facebook. So first and foremost, great. tell us a little bit about you, your beginnings, how you started and how you have come to where you are today, which is a really special place um, in the industry, both personally and, and professionally. Just, yeah, give it to us. Uh, give it to us all. Uh, thank you. Well, uh, I mean, I think the journey has been eight years of or nine years actually sludging through the mud for the better part of my journey i've had you know i started my business from scratch i had no financial backers i had no help you know it was just my husband and i with a big dream and yeah i started the business from scratch and had zero idea of how to run a business and had very little idea of what great culture looked like, what, um, you know, teamwork looked at, looked like, what processes and systems and great performance looked like. So how to try to, have, you know, had figured that out, you know, along the way and really stumbled a few times and made some pretty, pretty epic mistakes. And, you know, I guess that's kind of what led me to where I am today, where I get to coach other business owners on how they can, you know, make their business just, you know, into the vision that they, that they feel like they have in them, but maybe don't really know how to, how to go about creating it. So I'm super pumped and I'm super passionate about training, training and development, both personal and professional is something I'm just I am so behind. So this is great. 
Yeah, well, thank you for joining us. And, um, you know, we've been in each other's sort of lives in and out over the over the past several years, a long time, actually, was it six, seven years, something like that, uh, maybe? Since, yeah, ever time. since our first IPL machine. So my first IPL machine I actually bought, well, I, I got it on lease. Uh, when I opened my business, I had no idea how to run a business, but I was like, I'm going to get an IPL machine, a hydro demigration and an LED because it came as a package and I'm just going to make it work. And I remember the, like, it was like the week before we opened and the equipment was about to get delivered. And I literally lost the plot. I was like, how am I going to pay for this? And I just had this full moment of panic and I was just it was hilarious now looking back at it, but I just didn't know better i didn't know profit and loss i had no idea how much money we're going to make so learning experience a lot of people can resonate even like you know like back then even now with all the technology and the information and the information overload social media people still feel overwhelmed when they purchase a device yeah. um, or even if when they're adding on new staff or adding on new pieces of equipment and so i really think you can purchase a an amazing device that's one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, but if you don't know how or why to use it or manipulate the settings, then it's a bit of a waste. It's a so, total waste. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I, I think you know there's such a I think there's such an environment at the moment where it's like. Uh, if I buy this this new shiny toy, then that's going to set me apart and I'm just going to be seen as this cool place that has all the toys and all the bells and whistles. And we forget that the machine is only as good as the person who operates it. And it's like the settings the machine comes with and what you're learning at school or whatever basic training, that's like that's the starting point. Correct. And I yeah. think that we forget that basic training gives basic outcomes. And yeah. really important to note that you have to be able to manipulate the settings and tweak things so that you can best get the best results for your clients. And that takes training. Takes training. So with your team, what does that training look like? What does it mean to you? How did that implementation go about? Because oftentimes people will get a device or forget the device, a technology, a product, whatever it might be, the manufacturer says, yep, here, here's what you press. Mm. But then how do we move on? What do you do from there? And what have you invested over the years after you've purchased a mm. product or a piece of device? I don't know that people want to know how much money we invest in training each year because... <laughs> I can tell you it's not small change. And I get why a lot of business owners are sitting there thinking, I can't afford it. Mm. But I'm going to turn it around and say, you actually can't afford not to. Because if you're getting, if you're playing big and you're playing with active ingredients, with active you know, machinery, you need to know what you're doing. Otherwise, you're on a sinking ship. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, one day for my therapist team to be off the floor is like that's 10 grand just for in like loss of revenue and then on top of that you've got the price of the training but I think where a lot of people go wrong where they're not getting their ROI on that on that investment that training is they're not setting clear expectations around what do you want to get out of this training what is going to make this training successful for you? And then yeah. after the training, there's no follow-up. There's no, you know, there's no follow-up on, okay, how did, what did you learn? How are you going to go and implement these things? Uh, how do I know and how do you know if you've been successful and you've learned what you need to learn? And how ready are you to take this now and rock and roll? And yeah. so I tell all of my coaching clients, here is a post-training uh, evaluation form mm -hmm. to all of your team. Every time you have a training session, doesn't matter how big or small the investment, even if it's a one-hour hands-on training uh, or a case study, I don't care. Give it to your yeah. team. 
so that you set the expectation that after the investment of a training session comes an expectation that you're going to use that to actually implement the change so that the business and you can get the ROI. Absolutely. A question that just popped up in my head was, there's a lot of clinics that say, oh, well, I want to train my team because what if they take that knowledge and leave? Oh. How many times have you heard that? Okay, so that actually brings me back to my very first job in Australia. I asked the business owner that I was working for for three years to train me in doing skin treatments. And she said to me, she said exactly that. Why would I do that? Just so you can take all the knowledge and move on. And I was like, well, I'm moving on anyways, because I'm really freaking passionate about skin. And so I want to learn everything there is about skin. And so yeah. I was like, actually, you know what? Uh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to make the change. And so you actually end up losing people anyways. And the time that they do spend in your business, they're going to be low performers. So you're definitely not getting your return on investment. They're low performers. They usually have no ambition. They have no goals and they don't serve your clients well or the business. So it's like, what for? So it's a bit of a lose lose. And then when you, when we flip it, it's a win win. The therapist stays, stays engaged. The client, gets results so they're committed and they're going to stay mm. uh, the retention of both client and staff is high so yeah. it's actually sort of that mentality isn't it yeah I just think you know like one of the things that I come across most often in our industry is or in any industry really is there's a lack of confidence amongst yeah. therapists right or lawyers or whoever we're speaking about right there's a lack of confidence and lack of confidence comes from a lack of competence you know if you think about your very first skin consultation you ever did right it's clunky and it's like oh god do i actually know and it feels nerve-wracking because you're like oh my god i don't actually know what i'm doing but i'm faking my way through it for you to gain that confidence so that you can love coming to work every day and you can you can feel at ease and not be stressed out all of the freaking time you need the competence and in order to get the competence you need to continuously learn right there's no magic pill you're not going to get from i remember when i started the industry i was like i was looking at this this you know i guess uh a clinic owner that I looked up to and I was like when am I gonna know as much as you do and she was like uh you know this is a lifelong learning process and I was like oh I just want to be there now <laughs> and it's like that's not gonna happen it takes time and it takes investment and you're gonna keep going so where you are today is just the starting point you can go wherever you want to go but you need to put in the work and i think it has the passion yeah you know, if you're doing it i always say if you do it for money forget it you know it's, it has to be the passion and then your money comes right yeah i think the the thing that i'm kind of seeing there's a little bit of a disconnect between business owners and therapists and i've seen this for quite some time now where therapists are saying oh my business owner is telling me to always do this education can't i just like rock up to work and get my paycheck and and like and that's the end of it yeah. it's like you can but you're not gonna get anything invested back in you because the business can't afford it if on the other and also vice versa there can't be this situation where business owners are going well you have to do your education so that the business can make money that's also not right the yeah. right approach is you do this education you put the the effort into growing yourself and your knowledge you'll feel great about work you make great impact you get to change people's lives which is freaking awesome and while doing that, the business makes money so that it can invest more back into you, pay you a good wage, give you secure hours when, you know, 
recession hits, you know, yeah. like we're in right now, and and continuously invest in your personal and professional growth. Yeah. Speaking of which, I'm going to just same but different. Yes. Let's talk about mindset because that's something that you know is really um, paramount, paramount in your business, in your coaching, and in your clinic itself. So you know, whether it's the business owner's mindset or your team mindset, let's let's talk about that a little bit because that's something you're big on. I think mindset just goes hand in hand with everything that we've talked about, right? It's like you, I, I, I see this quite often, it comes back to what I was just saying, right? You're, you, you go into a job, a business, whatever, thinking, well, I'm here now, I've arrived, right? You just never arrive. There's always a next step and a next step and a next step. And so I think it's just really important to embrace a growth mindset where you know that, okay, like the skills, the abilities, wherever you are today is literally a foundation. It's a starting point. Given the right tools, the right support, the right care and accountability there's no end to where you can go and i think this comes back to the role of a business owner or the role of a manager is that their role is actually to enable your people to be to 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 do amazing things you know their role isn't to dictate what your people should be doing each and every day is that your role as a as a business owner or as a manager is like here are these amazing people that you chose to have on your team and who chose to be a part of your vision and your dream. Your job is to nurture that, make them passionate about what they're passionate about and give them the tools to succeed. That way the business succeeds, that way the person succeeds even more. Yeah, I call it the trifecta. It's a win, win, win. You know, the business succeeds, the the actual therapist feels, you know, they're succeeding. Yes. And the client, it's a win. So, so it's a three-way win, totally. 100%. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's the, that's the other thing is like connecting the why with the what. You know, our people, our therapists are so passionate about having an impact on people, but we forget all about tying that in with the work and it's Mm. like hey you know you need to sell 15 of these products so that you know so that you can get your bonus and you know and that's it whereas like if we turn that around it's like if you if you sell these products you get to have an impact on these people you get to solve their problems they get to go and have amazing careers they get to go and maybe meet the, the man of their dreams or the, the woman of their dreams, they yeah. get to have these amazing lives and be really confident and competent. And you just, you win, right? It's like, there's no losing in that. Yeah. What's your, what's your, um, your slogan for, for who? We change lives by changing skin. That go. is our purpose. And it's been our purpose. Like we defined that many, many years ago. And it was funny because at the time I'd actually gone through this exercise with a business coach and we'd found this purpose statement that was just like, it sounded kind of cool, but I could never remember it. So I was like, what is that purpose again? And then when I met my current business coach, we started working together like five years ago now and we still work together. Um, He was like, okay, well, I'm going to go as far as to say, if you can't remember your purpose, it's not a true purpose. And so no. we spent you know, half a day going through this exercise and I was like, oh my God, it was there all along. I actually have this really strong purpose because I could, I could resonate so much with the pain that people were going through from having my own struggles. And I was like, I can't believe I missed it. Yeah. And so, and, but I think that's kind of just the first step right? I think it fails quite often because people take this purpose statement and they think, oh, now we're good. We're all settled, you know, <laughs> off we go. We're, we're really cool. We're acing it. We're like Google. Yeah. Um, but then they don't actually take the next step, which is embedding that purpose into every action, 
every day. Every yeah. process that the business goes through, every system, every communication, like there's not a single person at who that doesn't know what our purpose is. Yeah. I would actually say there's no client of Hoods that don't know what our purpose is. Done a good job there. I think, so. I think so. Now going back, see we could go back. This, right? Going Let's back. Go back. So originally what we came here for yes. is the whole um, professional development. So a lot of therapists will come out of academy, uni, whatever, TAFE. Yes. And then go, yep, I'm, I'm a therapist, I'm a clinician, and that's my learning journey. We're done. Yeah. What's your take on that? I know you gave me glimpse earlier. but Well, I just think there is no, never such a thing as we're done right I mean I I stopped being hands-on probably three years ago fully like completely and I still read science journals I still read research I love it I'm just super passionate about it and I think if you're in this field like you've got to be passionate about it mm -hmm. and I know that there's this like you know, like I read this post not long ago on Facebook and I, I literally, I, I just, my heart just broke because it was kind of like this post about, well, you know, business owners can't expect us to do all this education. And it's like, well, if you want to be the best that you can be and you want to grow this amazing opportunity that is this career, because there are some amazing opportunities. A lot of these girls make more than nurses do right i'm not saying they're not worth it if they're doing a fantastic job and they're really invested and passionate 100 percent, we want to invest back into them right we want to support their dreams but you only get there if you reinvest into your skills and again like confidence comes from competence yeah so no, I think, um, so my team, I'm very lucky. Uh, well, I, I say lucky, but it's it's a deliberate, um, you know, definition of culture, right? We built a culture where people are really goals oriented and they want to they achieve things. And so every quarter we set new goals. So at the beginning of the year, the girls set their own goals and, you know, they have some amazing goals on there that just blew my mind and one of those goals was the high performance and purpose academy which is just amazing it's not my program it's my team's program because they really wanted to help multiply their knowledge into the industry yep. and at the same token they also set their own education goals so every week they do their own um training so they do one module of training every week they collaborate they do they read magazine articles they they've built out a resource library so that they all have access to you know sharing yeah. about anything and everything and you know that is i like i'm kind of had to say it because it sounds so like it sounds so overboard and coming from a business owner probably it sounds you know for for um, a therapist maybe it sounds overboard but my team really want to go places and that's why I'm super happy to invest back into them you yeah. know they get opportunities that I never got for sure um yeah yeah they, Oh, it's all about opportunity. It's um, like we said, it's about the passion, the opportunity, the drive and, and wanting to be, you know, somewhere making a change to someone. Um, and similar to you, I say it's not beauty therapy, it's confidence therapy. Because that's what it is, it's confidence therapy. So right? true, right? So for me, that's what it is anyway. Absolutely. Um, you know, yeah. like people, we sometimes we just forget, like I think, and I can speak from a business owner and a therapist because I've been a therapist as well. I used to work in a nail bar of all places, uh, which was not focused on growth at all. In fact, it was like, you no, know, you do your job and you don't get a lunch break. I didn't have a lunch break for three years. 
and you know everybody just bitches about each other and it just taught me so much about what i don't want in, yeah. in a business yeah. and i will tell you that uh when you want to go places you need to put in the work there's there's just no shortcuts and as a, as a business owner same thing as business owners we have to keep educating ourselves in leadership and in how to create great cultures how to hold team meetings effectively how to communicate how to balance care and accountability the job of your team as a therapist team their job is to learn everything they can about how to get the best results for their clients so that they can win and the business can win. Yep. Yep. Win win. So we're coming to the end of oh. um, this chat already. Already, do you believe it? No. So I know you, you've got your coaching um, on the side. Well, it's not really a side hustle. It's not even a hustle. Oh, it's my full time gig. Thing right, full time, um, and I know you have a select, um, you know, amount of um, time and clientele. But yeah. if someone wants to learn more about what you do or what you offer, or you know, is there some advice or a way they can maybe connect with you or they can contact you about, you know, getting some assistance or yeah, to, to, no, I don't want to say mimic, but so you can help them do what you've done. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's it's really awesome because I made all of the mistakes, right? I made so many of them that I've been able to learn. And I invested my my business coach when I first started working with him, and we worked like a lot closer together. It was eight and a half grand a month. Wow. So I can tell you, I was really ready for a change, right? Yeah. I was. I was ready. I was at rock bottom. Yeah, Half my team had left and I was like, something needs to change. Uh, and it's me. And it's been life changing. So I think, um, unfortunately, there's just one of me. And I've really have, after COVID, I made myself a commitment that I would stay true to the commitment to me. And so I, I don't take on a whole bunch of clients because I find that I'm not able to get the results for them if that's the case and I don't get the cut through. Yeah. And again, like I'm purpose driven. So for me, it's all about getting people like alleviate their pain points. Yeah. So I do have a full roster. In fact, I've got like 16 people on a wait list at the moment. Um, and I only work with bigger businesses with sort of like, bigger teams like over five people yeah. uh, and the reason for that is that's where my sweet spot lies and I'm, I'm just I wish I could help everybody uh, and you know I'm always on text or dms or whatever I'm happy to always happy to jump on a call with someone if like things are really you know really bad and, mm -hmm. and I need like just instant kind of help um because i am really passionate about helping people and that's why i'm in this um but yeah jump on my instagram jump on my instagram i share things there all the time ask questions in engage in the stories i do um i send out a newsletter i do have a form that you can fill in if you do want to do coaching with me or if you want to be on the wait list and that's it that's it otherwise um, so well, it's not, but it wasn't supposed to be. No, no. I think you and I don't do the hard sells, so, you know, that's, no. that's where our heart lies. Yeah. But um, if someone wants to follow you on Instagram, because you have lots of, um, you're, you know, you're always doing posts or stories, um, and there's free content. If you're a solopreneur or you're a solo yeah. operator or you've only got a team of two or three, um, Grey's always giving away you know, lots of valuable nuggets on her Instagram, which is just Gree Tomte. That's it. That's it. So That's make sure it. you go and like and share her um her page. Is that what they call the Instagram these days? Page? Yeah, I mean, I'm old, so I have no <laughs> idea. I'm like 51. Like, don't ask me about You're this. Not. I am 51. Oh my gosh. I'm an old baby. <laughs> Well, if you want to come, I know where you are, but if you are just a, not just, but if you're someone who's not in the industry and who wants to have a treatment at Grey's um, 
clinic. Hello, Naveen. She, <laughs> Naveen. Naveen saying you're looking and sounding amazing is always oh, free. Thank you. Um, yeah, so if, you, if someone wants to come and visit you, yeah. where, do they, where do they come and visit you? I mean, Not personally, but your clinic. I was just going to say, if they want to come and visit me, come up to the Sunshine Coast because that's where I hang out now. Um, but if they want to come to the clinic, I mean, Hood is in St Kilda um, and, yeah, the team there will look after you, absolutely, no doubt. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm not down here very much at the moment, but, um, yeah, I'm on, on, on the beautiful Sunshine Coast, which is so Amazing. nice. That's why you're glowing. <laughs> uh, I did have two and a half weeks in Bali, so that could also be with, but, you know. Anyway. Whatever. Anyways. <laughs> anyways this has been great thank you for joining me and um if you've enjoyed this please you know don't um don't hesitate to like that like button and share it with your team um Gree, you're always a pleasure to to speak with I, I love talking to you um whether it's on or offline I think what you're doing your work your inspiration your motivation is just fantastic and what you did for the industry uh, during COVID was also fantastic and brilliant. So thank, thank you. you so much. Next Wednesday, please join me at 7.30. So same channel, uh, not channel, I feel like it's TV now. Same channel, same back to back time. <laughs> um, next week we'll be talking about pigmentation. So understanding pigmentation, investigating why someone have a, has a, a, a certain uh, pigmentary, whether it's a disorder or even just superficially epidermal sun damage. Uh, we're going to talk about also skin needling for pigmentation and also when can IPL be used for pigmentation? Because you can't use IPL all the time, can you? Absolutely not. And you wouldn't know that if you've done nail <laughs> course. Uh, and if you haven't already, you should. Um, you. I, definitely that is so important to know. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So next week, see you then. Thank you for your lovely comments. Cindy, you all big lots of hugs and love. Thank you, Gray. Bye. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.